We're over halfway through the 82 game regular season at this point as most teams have played around 45 games or so. With that being said now, it's once again time to check in with how the awards races are shaking out. The NBA season is so loaded with talent now, and every award is jam-packed with contenders, so singling out people from the pack is becoming increasingly difficult. We're seeing a ton of new faces, we're seeing familiar faces, and we're seeing some unexpected faces leading the way in each category, and I'm here to discuss all of it today. We'll of course be going over the 6th man of the year, the most improved player, the rookie of the year, the defensive player of the year, and and of course the MVP, and we'll be picking the leader for each along with two runner-ups that are right behind them in the running. Before we start though, I want to thank RexMD for sponsoring today's video. RexMD is the number one leader in men's telehealth and they provide a fast and easy way for you to receive treatment regarding your sexual health, hair growth, and pain relief specifically in your knees. How it works is you answer a few questions in a quick online survey, then you get connected with a licensed doctor to discuss your symptoms, concerns, and treatment options, and lastly, they deliver your medication right to your door with free two-day delivery with discreet packaging, so you can be the only one who knows what's coming. If you find yourself in need of help in any of these areas, then definitely go check them out using the link in my bio, because if you do, use my exclusive link of rexmd.com slash hoops reference, you get 90% off your prescription. Once again, that's rexmd.com slash hoops reference for 90% off. Now, with that being said, let's get back to the video. We'll kick things off today by going over the most improved player race, and the player leading the way at the midway point of the season is Shea Gilgis Alexander of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Shea has been a promising young guard in the league for a few years now, and even last year he was producing like a borderline all-star, but this season he has legitimately made the leap to the point where it's hard not to include him in the superstar tier. I know the Thunder don't get much national media coverage, but I'd argue they're over a achieving more than any other team this season as they're just one game under 500 after being picked by most to finish at the very bottom of the standings, and most importantly, they're in the running for the play-in tournament where if the season ended today, they would be in it. SGA is scoring over 30 points a night, absolutely dominating the opposition on a nightly basis, and it really looks like the game has slowed down for him as he controls the tempo. As for the two players right behind him in the running, we have Jalen Brunson and Laurie Markkinen. Brunson left Dallas this offseason to go to a Knicks team where he could be the full-time point guard instead of playing in the shadow of Luka Doncic, and he is flourishing as a result of it, as he's now producing at a level that should get him some legitimate all-star buzz. Laurie Markkinen is another very strong contender in this race, as he's gone from being a decent role player who spaces the floor at an above-average level, to being someone who should also receive a ton of all-star buzz, scoring about 25 points per game while shooting the lights out. The next award we'll be going over today is the 6th Man of the Year award, and the leader in the clubhouse at the midway point of the season is Russell Westbrook of the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't think any of us would have imagined this being a reality, but yet here we are. Russ has fully embraced his bench role on the Lakers, and while the team is still flawed overall, the Westbrook situation has quelled a bit because of this change. Russ is putting up about 16 points, 8 assists, and 7 rebounds per game, and already in his first year as a 6th man, he's been able to put up more triple doubles off the bench than any bench player in NBA history has. He's still putting up numbers, and he's doing so in a genuinely beneficial way to help the team, because the Lakers are actually about 3 points better when Russ is on the court compared to when he's not in the game, which was not the case a season ago. As for the two runner-ups right by behind him at the moment, we have Jordan Poole and Malcolm Brogdon. Poole is someone who always seems to manage to catch the eye of the public with his flashy playstyle, and he's also scoring about 21 points per game off the bench, which certainly helps. 
He isn't necessarily the most efficient scorer, but he can heat up in a hurry, and is still one of the best bench players in the NBA. As for Brogdon, he's basically the exact opposite of that, as he's not necessarily a flashy player, but he's very productive, he's efficient, and he's effective, putting up about 14 points per game while shooting an incredible 49% from the field and 45% from three for a Celtics team sitting in first place. The next award up for discussion is the Rookie of the Year award, and the leader halfway through the season is Paolo Bancaro of the Orlando Magic. This award is definitely the most clear-cut, because even though there are other impressive rookies this season, Paolo has clearly been a tier above the rest. That's not to say he's been perfect by any means, but he was drafted number one overall to be an imposing scoring threat with an impressive combination of strength and skill, and that has fully been on display this year. Paolo is averaging about 21 points per game, which is the fourth most by a rookie in the last 20 years, and he's done so through a powerful driving game and a masterful mid-range game. As for the two rookies behind him at the moment, we have Benedict Matherin and Jaden Ivey. Matherin is coming off the bench for the Pacers, and yet he's averaging the second most points in the rookie class this year. He's started the season blisteringly hot, but has cooled off a little bit over the last month or so, specifically shooting from the outside, but he's still been able to produce because he is an outstanding slasher of the basketball as well. Ivy is third amongst rookies in points per game, and the Rookie of the Year race does typically come down to the players impressing the most statistically, so it only makes sense that he's the third highest favorite. He's an incredibly fast player who attacks well off the dribble, but he does have room to improve as a shooter, and in Detroit, he's getting more involved than originally planned after Cade Cunningham suffered an unfortunate injury. The next award is the Defensive Player of the Year award, and the leader at the midway point of the season is Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Memphis Grizzlies. The Memphis Grizzlies, that's right, the Memphis Grizzlies, are the NBA's number one ranked defense this season, and Jaron is at the heart of a lot of their success on that end of the floor. He missed the first few weeks of the season, recovering from an injury, but ever since his return, he's helped the team take off. He's the league leader in blocks per game, blocking over three shots a night. He's incredibly versatile and impactful defending both on the ball, off the ball, at the rim, and out on the perimeter. He has terrific defensive instincts, and he's been making life hell for the opposition. The runner-ups behind him are also very much in the running though, and they are Brooke Lopez and Bam Adebayo. Brooke having the best defensive season of his career, and his work as a rim protector has truly been taken to another level this season. He's top three in blocks per game, and the Bucks are a top three ranked defense this season, so even though Giannis Antetokounmpo has typically gotten a lot of the credit for the team's defense in the past, it's time now for Brooke to get his flowers as well. Well. Bam Adebayo is another absolutely elite defender who I think has been pretty underrated on that end because when people discuss guys who can guard all five positions, nobody does it better than Bam Adebayo. The Heat obviously aren't having the best season ever this year, but they're still a top 10 ranked defense and amid all of their inconsistencies, Bam has been one of their lone consistents. And finally, the last award we'll be discussing today is the main event, which is obviously the MVP award, and the leader for me at the midway point of the season is Luka Doncic of the Dallas Mavericks. The MVP this year, arguably, has more legitimate and rightful candidates in the running than we've seen in a very long time, because in this video, I obviously pick my leader and then two runner-ups, but I could have included about six runner-ups. Luka sticks out above the rest for a couple of reasons to me, the first obviously being his otherworldly production. He's leading the NBA in scoring this year, averaging about 34 points per game, and he's doing so while grabbing 9 rebounds and dishing out about 9 assists a night as well. Nobody in the league is doing more with less, because he lost his best teammate in Jalen Brunson this offseason, yet he still has his Mavericks team as a top 5 team in the Western Conference standings, because he can be a one-man wrecking crew. Now, the runner-ups are no slouches in this race either, and a lot can change between now and the end of the season, but I have Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid right behind him. Jokic has won each of the last two MVP awards, and Embiid has been the runner-up each of the last two years, and here 
year, they once again are in the running. Jokic is again stuffing the stat sheet as he always does, and with Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. back healthy this year, their team sits at the top of the standings, so he is right there with Luka leading the MVP race. Joel Embiid is second behind Luka in the scoring title race, averaging less than 0.2 fewer points per game than him, but he's also been having an outstanding defensive season, anchoring a Philly defense that ranks in the top five of the league, while the Sixers as a whole are in third place in the Eastern Conference. This is an incredible MVP race we're witnessing, and it's honestly still up for grabs, so the second half of the season is going to be must-watch TV. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who your picks for each award are. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.